those two things are really directly linked to the car park and uh, then they would address accurate signage to start with and um, yeah. and and the fencing around the car park mainly so people don't run off the car park and onto the grass areas yeah. and, it, and it defines where it is because it, um, it's an interesting um, history how it got there but we won't actually go into that but I think those two areas I think it'd be worth having another stab at the signage because it seems most ridiculous because it doesn't tell you it's through yes. and and we know the agreement with the um your landowner which is unfortunately back in sheer council um the is is that you know um you allow free parking but on a Saturday it's the clubs Basically. Yeah, there's, there's two or three exceptions. Yeah, the, the, the yeah I think we need to make sure that those exceptions are put on the sign. So there's that, no, they, no, they no necessity. Sign. I don't know whether they've been covered up, but they've got three ancient signs. There's been a mask over that, and I think that's where some of the information is. But, 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 yeah, yeah. You know. might use those two things for priority. Thank you, Robin. Um, yeah, I don't know what Robin said and what he said, I should tell him as well. Um, Question is, who is the decision maker? Is it a cabinet member? Who's gift is it? To say yes, I'm going to do something on this and not on that. Who is the decision maker? Um, I asked Lee and who says Joe Houston? Joe Houston. Hmm. Well, he's a good one. And he's yeah. here. And he's also very helpful if you want to fill the boards in and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, he's obviously. A, his brief is sorts of letters. Mm -hmm. so I, I, I would agree with what Robert says and what you're promoting is what sort of sign you have because it's everyone's interest to know that there's three part of the every first school. And it should be clear as to when people should park there and what they put there. And obviously, you want you know, ambulances and time to arrive safely and quickly. So for me, it's a no brainer. Um, CCTV, that's your average fancy next, I would say the best people see it as well. But I think it's a sign of That's the no, Thank you. I, I agree with both of those things. I just wondered how much money the whether that will complete, that will be enough to use all the money up. But if not, there's a little bit left. Whether, because obviously that's an area where there are real concerns about flooding. I don't know, it's a question really. Um, what's the drainage like in the car park? Is it, is it in the car park, um, over the time, it was really bad from that last December. That was the only time where it was really come over on the on you know, on the play that the car park was well, kind of about, I would say, 25, 30 percent over. Um, but um, that's the only time I've seen it really bad down there, but we all know that that was quite like, that's all right. Thank you, Chair. Um, is it within our gift as a committee or as the stuck in town to actually make a formal approach to the community to spend this money or is it through the athletics club? I think probably better if it came from the club that we could offer a better of support. Yeah. Yes, I certainly. Suggest that we offer a letter of support. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so. if there is any money left over, could the railings be looked at? Because, as Tony said, if a car in the car park <clears throat> did damage the railings, then we might be able to wind that in somehow. If that is an issue, mm -hmm. otherwise, the community board could we apply to them for. Because I'd imagine the bailings is a health and safety issue as to how I would look at it. It's you know not fit for purpose and quite dangerous. Yeah. So this quite heavy. Yeah. Quite heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is quite concerning. So if we could maybe look at the community board for funding to help with that. That's a touch go again. I think I think the community board funding is the next question, but I think the as Cat's done you and he says about those railings around it. I think I'm pretty certain by the time that you've got those railings replaced and the signing that will eat most of that away. Um, I think it was about 18,000, if my memory is certainly correct, um, available. Um, 18,000 pounds on a sign, the uh, change of sign, 
and putting them railings in and putting them back and the labour, that will pretty much run close to what that is. I, I, I'd be surprised if it, you know, now, because um, it all needs to be replaced as one so it matches. And, and those, when they were put in, um, they were putting their primary vehicles off the grass, weren't they? And people driving in and know where they were. Um, but if the signage is thought that'd be a marvellous thing, wouldn't it? That's only taken uh, the best part of 16 years. Um, I mean, uh, uh, 16, 18 years. It, it, we, we could actually um, have a, a sign opening ceremony. But, um, but as for the using the money on it, lastly, and they can hardly say that they couldn't really use Section 106 money on that, because they used a load of proportion of money out of Laysil to and the Mays Morton Road development to and um, recover the after turf. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in Swan Pool, which is an unusual use of Section 106, but it was okay to do it apparently. So I don't, I mean, there's a, there's a precedent set, so it'd be unusual if they said that the maintenance can be done that way because they've already done it themselves. Absolutely. And we could produce a record where they did do it. Absolutely. The final decision, of course, has to be developed, but he's the one playing the part. Tony, thank you very much. You, you, but also um, has been pointed out when you come down the structure of the road down the hill, the visibility of the road is really bad because there's the sallow, mm -hmm. which is a type of road, really burgeoning out from that conifer hedge. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that could be done at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that would be very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, what we've got tonight, let's just discuss it. We yeah. get no mandate to make a decision. But it's not no. mentioned. If you could just come back to us with, with your, yeah, with those um, things. Yeah, I'll bring up. Being the has been fairly common. I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just make some suggestions on some of the way that should be, you know, uh, presented. Yeah. Which would fade on both sides. Particularly as a tapering on that. Yeah, the good ones are. Yeah, and then you know, then send that letter off, and we'll we'll back you up. Will do. Okay. Message to address okay. for your turn. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. 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 Thank all right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Councillor Tribe. Good evening, Martin. Good to have you with us. <laughs> You'll appreciate it, Martin. You can um, you can discuss and debate things, but you can't vote tonight. Um, right, item four, Buckingham Neighbourhood Plan, Bernard yeah. Belt Plan, Buckingham Local Plan. Any updates? Sheila, it's here. Uh, um, last week, um, and that was um, clear and easy myself. Um, so I would hope that we've got the whole thing back to you um, at meeting on the meeting of September. Excellent. Um, you weren't here at the last meeting. We were talking, members were asking if you and I were going to do a grand tour of the parishes again at some point. So you're used to luck for that. <laughs> Um, I think so, yes. Um, we will do letters um, because I think it is a case of being asked by the parish councils to attend, no. um, but we can, we can angle for invitations. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and obviously, we can try and do that as soon as they back. So it would be good to go back to the friendly ones who we've already said they want to work with us and just yes. update them and have another go at those who we weren't so keen and then take them up this way again. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I know some of the parishes are interested to talk here if I represent them in other places, but um, I think we do need to bring as many people on board as possible because history tells us that from when they're not invested in it, it, it causes, as you mentioned, problems at a later stage. And even if they're negative comments, we still need to know what their negative comments are. So, um, but I do think that. Have you been given um, um, any signal um, from Buckinghamshire Council on they've been out the brown fields and now they're going out the green fields? 
Um, sorry, so I don't understand. Um, so um, have you have you got been given any outlanded information of detail about what their plans are about numbers and, and anything like that? Because if you have, I'd be very surprised because they haven't consulted the Buckinghamshire Council since 2020. So um, it'd be nice to think they're talking to somebody. Okay. Um, I haven't met any formal request for numbers which we are intending to have. Um, but I'm happy to look into that purposes. Um, and I think the answer you know, the relevant thing is still out or out for um, the call. Um, so we will see what is um, comes forward from that. But yes, it will be part of the, um, the request for um, yeah. information. I, I could I just say that because it's quite a very tightly knit group of people um consisting of planning um chairs and um Cabinet members and senior officers are looking at the plan, and they're called a subgroup, um, a subgroup of, of senior people. I don't know if that class is a subgroup, but they think it does. Um, so that's why I'm saying that at the moment, there's very little going out to the likes of myself and even any of the other councillors on it. So I'm desperate that, it, that we do at some point get some proper conversation going because it would be a shame if everything was sort of um, hefted in and at the late stages we found that it wasn't what we, we wanted because I'm sure that um, there's plenty of other knowledge out there, there other than those three people. Mm. Thank you, Owen. Sorry, so, I do, sorry, I, I, I do know that they are required to give us a number. Whether they will give us a number outside of what we're in <laughs> at the moment is another matter, but you can ask. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions on our local neighbourhood or bail plans? Uh, John? John uh, yeah, I was looking at, uh, I came across the website the other day, uh, which has the comparison between the houses built and the increased population. And in Buckinghamshire, if it's right, the population has increased by 9.5% in the decade. And the number of houses has risen by 10.6%. So 10% more, more than 10% more houses built and increasing. I'm not quite sure what that says. It does suggest that uh, the need for more housing may not be as great as we are being told. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether developers have been able to profit. Never. <laughs> How could you say so? She will be taking all of this in <laughs> I think sometimes what is put in that is that we wish to move in to Buckinghamshire and hence why my process is built as only population increase. It has a different scenario. Yeah, we also, she at the last meeting, we just stuffed the Winslow plan and the White Mates Morton plan. So we'll well aware of those now, and we can take parts of those in our own when we work on our revised plans. So. Um, and we're happy to then take this and um, response to consultation on that. Thank you. Well, Margaret. Thank you. Just picking up on that point about the population growth versus the growth in the number of houses built, I think the key fact is households rather than population because. With a lot of families splitting up, there are more possibly more households, mm -hmm. even though the population has increased. Mm -hmm. So there's a greater need for more houses. John, can we just clarify your figure? We said 9.5 percent increase in population. So I'm assuming you want to be sure. Robin. Yeah, I think the other thing is, of course, there is always the vague and notion of opportunity that young people might actually be able to save a massive deposit and have their own house if they are unable to pay social housing so or, or, or are stuck in a private rent trap so we hope that some of that increased housing could possibly be um accommodation for young people and people who are retired who then move down to a, a similar property and that and and um people i know people who move into newer properties but they're smaller because they no longer need their larger property. Mm. Um, and that quite often happens. Um, downsizing seems to be a famous thing for 
people of a certain age. Um, mm. But no, I, I, I maybe just possibly in, in my wildest dreams that some young people are getting some help. The, it's, it's, the source of the information is from the uh, 2021 census, so it is up to date. Uh, and processed by the Department of Medical and Archival and Communities. And in Buckinghamshire, the population has increased by 9.5% in the last decade. While the number of houses has risen by 10.6. Yeah. You you then said it's a 10 percent difference, actually one percent. Well, no, no. nine point five, ten point six, ten percent, all the times have jumped. Not the one point That's okay. I'm with you. So I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Right. So anyone else? No. Let's move on to um, item five. Receive minutes to walk back to practice planning and consortium, um, and also to receive information from the Zoom meeting. Thanks, Shayla. Thank you, Shayla. Thank, Thank you. As you know, Anthony Ralph is our representative of the NDPC. And Anthony, not happy reading. Not happy reading at all. So um, when I got this set of minutes uh, on which I usually do a fancy mm. to do a report, I realized that if I cut it down at all, I'd lose the flavour yeah. of what was actually said. And so I chose to offer these verbatim as I could. Mm. And constantly have it before you. And of course, the thing that's drawn out is we're not alone. Mm. All yeah. our discussions have been on various issues, and lo and behold, it's the same with every mm. other parish. Um, and the second document really um, mm. at Hardcastle wanted to take it. Off the main means, and because he wants wants to try and get some sort of sensible sit down communication mm. with Buckinghamshire Council to see if we can get a better report. Mm. I haven't heard anymore because I don't feel much in between meetings, but let's hope we can do something. So, mm. I'll to thank you. Thank you. It's a very good report. And one thing here you mentioned is um, there will be a meeting in October, face to face meeting. Hopefully, yes. you're going to maybe get some cabinet members along. And, uh, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. 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 But as, a, as, a, as a side point, I've never actually met any of my colleagues. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I've seen them on Zoom. Yeah. And I've never <laughs> met them on the flesh. I used to be the first time. This is, I've been yeah. there for 18 months. Mm -hmm. so. but we have this extraordinary situation, as, as Margaret was saying today, that we've never brought the charter out. And since then, yeah. everything seems to come in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. What's really worrying is at the moment, as well, is. is Cost implications that there's two judicial reviews outstanding, yes. not a new to wonder over this gas um, tank in place, wow. which had 1,200 objections. And then, of course, there's our more local one at Walnut Drive, which yes. has 400 objections, both going to a uh, judicial review. And if Buckingham yes. Council lose those, if we, as the council taxpayers, can shut down for those. Mm -hmm. um, Robin. Well, I mean, firstly, thank you, Anthony, for attending. Secondly, thank you for the information you brought back. But it just rather paraphrase many of the problems that we are encountering, as you rightly said. I mean, um, of course, the we'll refer to the A421 study later in the meeting, but um, the Augustus bodies of Buckinghamshire Council seem to be um, keeping them, giving that information they fixed to themselves at the moment. Uh, but I do think it's going to be. One of the levers up or levers down, whichever way you look at it, um, in respect to possible growth in the future. And if you've got an eye to 2025, 2020, 30 going forward, and which most plans have to be resilient for a good number of years, and then they start doing the new plan. So mm -hmm. it really needs to be something that she's up and open and discussed, but we will probably do it again later on the agenda. One of the things that concerns me most, really, is the business of removing all the public comments mm -hmm. from the website. That, for me, is trying to change history. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a good thing. I also think it's counter to the whole point of the UPR, which is about controlling the information and making sure that more of it is not out there that doesn't need to be out there. And I feel that to remove all those comments, 
at all, the selling before due process is completely completed, is actually going against GDPR. Because what it's encouraging, indirectly or good, what it's encouraging is people to download that information onto their own hard drives. Mm -hmm. So they're actually multiplying the amounts of information that actually is going to be present out there on people's equipment, rather than in the knowledge that you still on the cloud, you can always access it. If you think if people think they can't do that, people will download it, and therefore you're multiplying the problems that GDPR is meant to overcome. And I think we ought to, well, through MVP, then, um, uh, I mean, maybe the consortium all for us directly. I think they'll say, look, this isn't right. You know, show us the legal opinion that says you have to do this. Um, because I actually generally think it's the wrong way of doing it. And more generally, the approach that's been taken with parish and town councils. It is difficult not to conclude that Buckinghamshire Council, cabinet members, and councillors don't care. And they don't care that we know they don't. Because they just don't care. Mm -hmm. It's difficult not to conclude that. I'd like to be persuaded otherwise, but right now I'm looking at that. Uh, and we'll come on to it in a while. I'm looking at that uh, charter and linking. It's not worth the entry of papers. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a personal interest in this because last year I went to the towns and parishes planning forum at Rooney Park in Eastern Clinton, where they sprang the news on us that because of data protection, they couldn't keep um, comments on the portal once the agreement, once planning approval had been reached, either approved or refused. We then questioned that and they came back and told us, no, it's not going to happen. We're going to leave them on there. Mm -hmm. That's gone, isn't it? Um, and the, again, the bottom line is that as Anthony says in here, and so did our friends at Winslow, Boy Band of Paul, etc. They all say that at the moment, Buckingham Council is, is housing target driven. Mm -hmm. and this is why they roll over and develop this. Um, so, you know, we have to build a community centre, we'll walk away from it. They're just, they're just um, you know, really running frightened at the moment. And it's probably, as you probably have heard, this debate. Between the next prime minister, one of them, <coughs> I won't name her, <laughs> <laughs> said that you know her, her aim is to abolish housing targets because they're not working. That, that would be an interesting one to follow. Yeah. But, um, Robin, can yeah. we keep quick? So, yeah, well, abolishing targets didn't work in the NHS, did it? There was no way in this in 2010. Abolishing targets means we are where we are today, so abolishing targets isn't the answer. But on the legal thing, I think perhaps we need to discuss how best to. Um, extract from the Dom's points are salient, so at least um, about GDPR. My suggestion is that we need to work on a question with notice, which goes to full council. Um, because if you put a question with notice, which is what is the legal recommendation to support this thing, it's a question in the public domain, and they have to be very careful how they answer that because if they haven't perhaps the legal advice they've got is, is good for the day, but not good for life. Um, I think that's something that perhaps I would be willing to undertake. Cabinet's already filled in my head at the moment, but I think the next council meeting, because it would give us a clue when they gave the response in the public domain, it means that everybody in the parishes could read that response, and everyone who has a concern could form an opinion about it, good or bad. And I'd be happy to work Thank you. Council to do that. We have done this once already, Robin, but we could certainly do it again. Well, the question with notice is a completely different than the question Thank to you. the council because it's in the public domain and then they have to answer it. They can't put anything which is actually incorrect or wrong in the public domain. Thank you. That's good advice. Thank you. What kind of members feel about that? Could you could you raise this question? I would. I want to work, I want to make sure that I'm, the wording that I do represents the view. I want to know that yeah, I'm not my heard, own view. I think you've heard the view tonight. Yeah, so if I were to anchor in a question of notice for council, because that, then we get it back. Thank you, Robin. At the moment, there's nothing in the public domain, is there? Yeah. Well, 
the big problem we warned them at the time, this is a year ago now, we said if you take these comments off, plans go to appeals or judicial reviews, what's the judge going to look at when they when all that drive goes to um, the Royal Courts of Justice in, in November? He's not going to have that information in front of him unless somehow Buckinghamshire Council can miraculously to rescue it. Oh, they can't. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. John? Well, that is a question. They, may, they might remove them from public website, but have they released them yeah. together? Mm -hmm. Is there a record that could, somewhere? That could go in our question as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Anyone else? Like Anthony, thank you very much for that. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you for the work you're doing with the other towns and parishes. Um, that kind of break yeah. your. Meeting for the Zoom yeah. app tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. item six action reports. You will see the action reports. Just for the understanding things on the agenda tonight. Um, you're at the tree, you're still awaiting information from the Green Spaces Manager Office. Okay. Yeah, sorry. And they've quite they've been a bit, bit overloaded this time. <laughs> the, um, yes. So, the press release and everything has gone out. Just looking at the Woodland Trust and the is the only right. My recollection is that they don't have a proper so I think it's going to happen on it. Thank you right. very much. Um, Cornwall's Meadow and the survey we're going to do draft to be sent to John when time allows. Yes. There's a busy week last week, so I'll get to that in the same week Thank you very much for that. Um, Anyone else? Other thing, warm up drive, there was just clarification about judicial reviews. We did take legal advice. Although judicial review proceedings have commenced, it doesn't affect the validity of the planning permission, which has been issued unless and until the court believes it to be washed. Therefore, the developer could commence the development at this time, but could do so at their own risk. Um, Carol? I was just not ending on that one, actually. But, um, just a small correction, because I think we. Enforcement door on Manor Cottage is, is not in Manor Street in the middle way. Yes, so down on the enforcement team is not Manor Street. Exactly. But it's gone it went into the middle of the Miles Miller's Rose and Felix is anyway. I've sent it to the photograph. Yeah, yeah, we've been remedied this one wanted to make sure it didn't turn into the middle lane and they yeah. couldn't find it. Yeah. it was, but it was, it was, it's a four months, so it's not. No, I noticed that. Until, until, until Thanks, Karen. Uh, John? Do we have any information on how much money Patrick has raised now? How close he is to the I think I can answer that. Um, along with the fundraising elements that have been taking place, some of you probably have been seeing them and the contributed to them. The, the, the pot now stands approximately £36,000. Um, which is amazing, mm. and um, the, as you think now know, the, the new set will go over the second and third. So, between now and then, uh, we actually get focused on the one continuous support pack that raised the extra four thousand. So, yeah. only four thousand left to go. Yeah, next yeah. will be yeah. able to do that, and we can help. Right, mm. I'm sure that's me. Yeah, you have to do it members as individuals. It's both yeah, no, account and every account involved. It moves up to another tier. Yeah, and there, there will be opportunities to contribute to the yeah. things like the picture picture Oscar. Um, but also, don't forget the plant store in, in the ice cream. Right. It's really an enormous amount of money. And adjust the site store. Then. I did. I think yeah. that information you tell that would be great to help in social media. People would be inspired, yeah. Uh, being inspired to this over there, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. to get out of that point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing it tomorrow. Thank you, Carol. That's great. Right, nothing else on the actions. No, okay. Um, we can start on the planning applications then. Um, the first one tonight, um, we'll run back again Station House in Kendrick Road. We'll recall that. Went originally to 12 dwellings, it's reduced to 11 dwellings, and by the time went to appeal on grounds of one determination, it's gone down to nine dwellings. Um, the inspector still uh, refused it. Um, there's a number of reasons. 
he gave the bottom was to do with the protection of the station house, which he said, although it was not listed, was a non heritage asset which needed to be preserved. He didn't like these overlooking the allotments or of the railway walk, which is called the Bernwood Walk now at this point. Um, yeah. Okay. There's other items. Um, he didn't mention the mine houses in his appeal findings. So what they've come back with is another application for eight houses. So he, he, he at no time said nine is too, too many. So they've come back with eight. Um, they're shared courtyards. And it's reminding about the lighting. That's it. They have stated. Thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> actually yeah, in their application, but street lighting all the way down, all the way to town, so easy for people to walk. The inspector also, remember, was very unhappy about the vegetation being cleared from the banking. He said, yes, it should retain those that rural feel about it. All. So we've got the application before us tonight. One thing that is missing, um, the application it's not only for eight dwellings, but refurbishment of the existing station house. And there is nothing whatsoever in the documents about that refurbishment. So at this point, we don't have enough information to proceed. But, John? Yeah, that would be my point as well. We haven't got all the information, uh, not least the archaeological um, information. So. Yeah. Hmm. But the, point, the question I had was is there space for the refuse dwellings to go in and out? It looks really tight. Yeah, you would see from Catherine's report she gave us, you, you, you were very concerned about the distance. Yes, People can have to waste, take waste and recycling went to sort of nine like this. Sorry, right. yeah. I always have said that the tracking diagram is inadequate and waste and recycling says it's too far for the end houses to fall into the centre point. It's actually on the <laughs> Plus, the waste lorry has when it's pulled out of this new access, it has to actually cross to the before you get all turned aside. So yes. It's so tight a turn. It is like a great mm. acute angle. That's the only point. They, what they, <laughs> they want to put a new access in, which mm. goes at right angles off the to the road, down that bank, mm. and then churn the shark right and go into the we'll side. <laughs> Well, yes. I mean, I, I went down there and actually looked at it. I didn't attempt to even try no. it, but um, I thought, why well, not? They're going to build a sleeper wall so that it divides the allotment people coming off the original access from the people in the houses coming off the new access. But the gradient is just astonishing. But the actual document, the, the, the design access statement, the new one, is very, very messy. They talk about is still being in um, Elfdivo district council's area. Uh, they about the inspectors refuses point by point. Um, I don't think very. Uh, we're going we, to cut and paste all your old documents yeah. without revising it. You're bound to have some anomalies, and they can. No. You know, you're going down 5.2 to 4.3. That's me. Yeah, that's I was not sure you can count better than that. There's also the massive and local educational establishments, which is the University and the George Greville School, but no others. Um, they mentioned the Royal Latin or the Buckingham Academy School. Are we going to object to this or just delay our decision? Well, it's up to members to decide whether the new application has changed enough since what was thrown out of the field. I propose that you. I'll second that. Um, I'm sort of the one that passed the party second. Um, because I didn't think it's like at all for a whole heap of reasons, not mm -hmm. the reference to yes. Plus, we have a lack of information on the refurbishment. Yeah, all of that. Apparently, right. Bucking Society's view. <laughs> yes. Well, I think we probably echo everything that's been said about the access. And perhaps, just for clarification, it does seem as if they want to put a house into that bank as well as the access road. Really, that's the final Yes. Um, but um, our main um, objection really, is uh, lack of immunity. There didn't seem to be much immunity around with the, the, the new housing. And 
the orientation of the new housing in relation to station house does it no favors. Um, there's car parks on either side of it. Um, I think they're trying to make it some sort of focal point in the middle of this, yeah. uh, this housing, but with cars either side, all you're going to see is traffic and tarmac. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that would be our major objection to layout. You haven't given a view yet on um, the design. Hmm. It's not the back end vernacular, is it? <laughs> No, but it is an architecture that does not. It's okay, but it doesn't really pick up on. But it's fine. I think I'd like to say a lot more about that when it comes to the OZO Waste uh, yeah. design statement, yeah. too, because all of it is used as palette of red brick and slate, and possibly odd clay tile and buffering. And it, it just, just nobody mm -hmm. takes account of other materials that are historically used as buffering. Yeah. Yeah, one, one thing that the inspector said, which stuck in my mind, and it still does, under, under 14, he said, station house is not clearly seen from the road, but it's visible from several points in the adjacent footpaths. From here, the view is mainly of an attractive elevation that would have looked out onto the railway line. Such vistas give a sense of how the building would have looked in its historic surroundings and make up an important part of its setting. It's a very powerful um, yeah, conclusion we reached there. I agree it's, with every word. That's surrounded by modern courtyard houses, you're not going to get that. Well, so, and I noticed else? highways are also say that planned as parking is to be discouraged because it does lead to as well as have others into it, uh, yeah. not getting down. Yeah, we're seeing more and more of this, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a proposal in a second. If anyone else wants to speak, I'll still put it to vote. All those in favour of it, we object and um, also ask for further information on station back. Yeah. Uh, we'll be on the yeah. Martin, did you want to say about that? It? So we're not ignoring you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thank you. Um, second one on the agenda is 31 Islands Road. Again, we've been here before. This is the, the houses, one of the bungalows, not one of the larger bungalows of the Islands Road. Um, it's a prior proven application for construction, an additional story to create the first floor structure, replacement of roof and erection of a single story rear extension. Um, last time we regretted the loss of a bungalow. Mm -hmm. It's quite interesting because at this point, one of the cornerstones of our new, our, our revised neighborhood plan would be that we want to build developers to build more bungalows to meet Buckingham's mm. aging population. And here, here's a proposal to remove one by a very, very large development. It's parky, um, there's no local style in it. There are no objections, but there are two letters of support. Um, from the neighbours on either side. It is, I have to add, a pro forma reply. They say exactly the same thing, which is we have no objection to the, the plans. Tom? Well, looking at the two of the bullet points that Catherine's put down, it seems that we're fairly restricted as to what we can project on, what we are going to get. And the question is really into whether the design is acceptable in the economic environment. Right as well the line of housing be destroyed. So it's all the streets and um, objection. Um, so the plan objects not on the basis of losing a lot of money. So that clearly is allowed in the plan of section. So the question I guess what comes to is whether we think having the line of one of those interrupted by a two-story building on a road which has houses on the other side. Is going to be something to push up for a separate street scene and the other. I don't have any really strong views on that. So, who's your questions? Lisa? Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I, I agree with what John was saying. It's to have you know, a photograph that's on page 26 or 56 to have the bungalows and then a two story building. It is going to affect the street scene. Totally. So, um, yeah, it's it's not a good one, is it? 
you know, the matter also we are pointing out, it's right opposite the school entrance. Mm. Um, but it will be very, very visible from yeah. that point of view. Uh, Tony? Well, the battle stand is very divided on this. <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Yes. Um, I think uh, half the group is thought that it did affect the street scene, mm -hmm. the first scene by the way, and the other half, uh, to which I adhere, is that actually it's probably a better use of space. And uh, I think a debate should be had about bundles because they are very greedy of space, when, which is something that is going to be more and more relevant to building houses as how to build which is accommodates people who, who prefer a, a ground floor living accommodation and, and, and the more flexible use of space that doesn't take up vast areas of gardens. With this particular property, um, I have thought that future generations are going to ask to put extensions on that may either be flat or, or into first uh, second schools. Personally, and I'm just going to put my personal view here, that I noticed that in Tindrick Road, they've done some housing which is adapted to older people with ground floor accommodation, but a spare room for their children as a sort of dorm or above. I think that's a really good way to go. And, Berkeley. and much more sustainable than actually funding it. That, that's, that is a personal thing. The, the society is very divided about the street scene and and the uh, relatively good design of this extension. Thank you. Uh, John raised the point about, of course, under, under the new um, legislation, you can add a story to a house or a smaller building, provided it meets certain criteria. Um, Catherine, is there reasons you could see you want to propose it on those grounds? Well, the legislation is the legislation. Um, we'll get to so in, in your opinion, it does I can see yeah. I mean, it, it does it reaches not three and a half meters. The other one, it's, it's got inside the room, it's going to be up material, so it's, it's, it's just a question of what you think is about. Thank you. Well, I think I know what Karen would say, and I think the fact that it's houses on the other side of the road, I, I struggle to say it's going to be a terrible, terrible thing. So I would propose that we want it. So that we don't object. Let's make a proposal. Yeah. Second That's proposal. Yeah. Second proposal. Oh, second. Proposal. Second. 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 Any last wish to speak on that? Margaret. Just briefly, but having had the discussion this afternoon, I did walk back that way. Um, and I did notice that the adjacent bungalow further up Island Road was actually slightly higher their roof line than the existing bungalow so that might oh. mitigate the extra story mm. as well because obviously highlands road mm. is so quite nice. steep yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so um actually that probably does reduce the impact of it. i don't know does it it's just i noticed that so i thought it's worth sharing <laughs> Well, we have a proposal and seconded. Um, all those in favour of it, do not object. Again, that is. Everybody except. Robin and John. No, I'm not. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good, healthy discussion about how, how we go ahead with these. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we're going to see a lot more of these chapters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't say anything about everything you want to be Of course, that's all building regulation. And all of them. Fine. Number three is number 18, Badger's Way. It's a household 
application to demonstrate the conservative direction of the single story road extension and formation of new crown roof over existing single story flat roof to front. I know Karen would be happy that we're getting rid of flat roofs. <laughs> 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 It, it doesn't overlook any other properties, and the new roofs will be subservient to the yeah. existing owner. Yeah. John, no objections. No objections. Yeah. Right. Would you have a proposal? Yes. No no objections. Seconded, yeah. please. So, proposed by John, seconded by Councillor O'Donoghue. You'll vote on the floor. All those in favour? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next one is quite unusual. It's Catherine said we don't often get asked about um, primo applications. Mm. And here we have 25 rain close, which is already a multiple application, six bedroom house, means that other people that there are related. That will change to seven bedrooms. Mm. Um, highways are quite happy the parking. There's a double garage and there's two parking spaces in front of it. Catherine, I'm sure, remind us you only want to get to three parking spaces. You don't have to offer any more. This is on Mount Pleasant, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing we haven't got here is some, um, as Robin mentioned this afternoon, there's, there's nothing from the um, licensing officer, so I haven't either approved or objected. So I suggest to Mark, if we do approve, agree with this, that we say subject to see some yeah. recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Could we have a proposal for this? Can we just make a comment? Because what they're changing is the study right. into um, another bedroom, but we don't really have a sense of how big that study is. We've talked in the past about the size of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And the building level, which is, is that good? Don't want to think. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not wild about this. I think seven people in a house is a lot of people yeah. um, to share what is basically at home. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got one sitting room, we've also got staff. And so they, have, they actually have got some living space as well as the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. But I'm worried about the size of the seven. The study point of the drawings is actually bigger than the existing bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's been about the same. But you're right. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that this one would be absolutely Just an, an observation again, really, not loaded either way. But it was originally a five bedroom house, and one could imagine um, two parents and, you know, maybe. If there's five bedrooms, at least four more children, which is six, isn't it? And some of those bedrooms are quite big, so it could have been designed for a quite a large family originally. But I know it's not it's exactly seven strangers. No, it isn't. Yeah. But uh, you know, it is a it is a substantial house. Mm. Yes, uh, there is not a uh, lot of bathroom and toilet facilities. Seven bedrooms. Number one is an en suite, so you can cross that up as an en suite. It's there's only one bath and bathroom on the top floor, and it's just a WC on the bottom floor. And you know, for seven people, and most probably are university, trying to get out in the morning. You know, mm -hmm. no, I, 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 I don't think that is, is a comfortable living. I think that this is where the, we would need the opinion of the licensing officer, wouldn't we? We'd be yeah. looking into things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which would be in our reply if we yeah. don't object. Can we have a person? I, I, I would certainly say no objection subject to uh, the licensing authorities yeah. for either. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So that's, no. that's the Ralph. Second, please. Oh, second, Ralph. On I those to, on that condition that, second, and that we you know the licensing yeah, with the rider attached. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So all those in favor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not voting. No. 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 So it's five. Five. Those five. against abstentions. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Two abstentions. Yeah. Council Harvey abstaining along with Council Stafford. Martin Cole. 
it comes substantially. Right, um, let's move on then. A bit of gaiety, moving the cinema from the, <laughs> moving the cinema from the dairy to Vincent Centre in Hunter Street. I think Catherine put in the notes originally, or maybe it's an email that she wasn't able to at one time to find the commission for the Vincent Centre. We did eventually find it amongst sheets of paper, but not in the right order. So one thing we will ask is that when when we either approve or disapprove of this, that we ask the um, <laughs> to be responsible to get the Vincent Centre up on in the right place in the court. Yeah. So for future use we can find it. So the basis so basically what it is is moving the cinema to the lecture theatre of Vincent Centre, which sure already, by the way, does have cinematic equipment for students, etc. So it won't be something completely new. It'll be a lot more comfortable as well. Yeah. And access will be better. Mm -hmm. We're aware that certain mm -hmm. councillors have in the past complained that they won't be able to use the lift to get the film close. So, John. Yeah. Um, a couple of points really. One is um, it should be referred to as the Vincent Building. Vincent Centre is an academic department. Uh, it's got a little sense of virtual um, thing. The building is the Vincent building. I don't know the first of the application referred to the Vincent Center. Oh, it's not consistent with the Vincent building, it's the reason that you're starting. Really? <laughs> okay. Right. So I've been told, I've been told off the park according to the Vincent Center. Delta planning, according to the Vison Center. Yeah. Okay. And secondly, can I say this will not end with something? Uh, some people enjoy existing cinema because it doesn't let them go sleep in the car. <laughs> <laughs> the seats in the car will let people go to sleep. So I'm afraid we will have more snoring than we had in the past. And I, I think that it's a, a reason to have such a. By the snoring or the. <laughs> yeah. Both. So is everybody happy with this? Yeah. 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 I was going to say, um, obviously, no objection to this at all. But this was part of the original idea yeah. for the Vincent Building mm -hmm. Stroke Centre. This will be a public yeah. Uh, yeah. facility as well. And we are actually, as a town council, effectively agreeing that mm -hmm. we're achieving one of the primary mm -hmm. objectives, but it was actually yeah. sort of, it would be nice to okay. say that. Yes, and it was visual similar funding for the, for the building. And it was to use the type of project. Correct. Not just That's true. Yeah. It's nice to share. Margaret. Thank you. And I, I would imagine that the, the people, the film place, the committee or group will be delighted to um, move to these premises. I think it's been an aspiration of theirs yeah. to do oh, so. Yeah. The public parking is also just as convenient because you still park on the island. There is the same yeah. parking as you'll see from yeah. Catherine's photograph right, right next to the building. Yeah, I've used it. Or yeah. <laughs> right, could we have a photo yeah. then? Yeah. We sort of give proposals. Yeah. No objection. Thank you. Second, please. Um, Margaret, thank you. All those in favour? That's everybody yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've gone on abstaining and I didn't take part in the vote. Um, noting the decision tonight of the committee, um, having had some long legs in these things in the past, and um, Knowing that the town council in impeccable involvement back in 2003 2004 in actually helping getting the film place up and running and finding finances from within the council to do so. Um, I think this is a situation where the council is supporting something that it's been a long held supporter of, and I, I think it would be worth worthy of a of these notes in the decision of the committee to do it and, and on how this is going to um, create not only a better place for people to go to but um, it, it shows a better um, partnership working between the university and the film place yeah. and the university 
and, and the town, it's general good news story. And I would hope that through the chair, we would agree that a press release with yourself and the mayor about this, because I think it's, it is a very important move forward. It's something that we've been requesting and the right has been done by everybody concerned here. And I think it's very important that we actually say that. Now the decision's taken, I'll comment on it, but um, um, that's what I hope you would do from a town council's point of view, because I think you speak for the town, everybody else speaks for their different sections of the community. And as the town council was heavily involved and Catherine, um, how I looked at me when I said at the beginning, um, um, I think it's only right that we comment on this stage of the process because it's such a good thing. Thank you. Uh, yes, I agree with Councillor Sussbury. We'll not only uh, do a press release, but also advertise the fact that the film place is moving. Those people who may not be aware that it's moving. So yes, the press release will be uh, sort of advertising. Mm -hmm. Could I point out, mate? It's true that it's, it's a film place we should be making. <laughs> It's not, it's not us. We don't own it. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree, but we, I could, we, we, are, we are just helping with the facilities that are available in the town. We could associate also yeah. that bit shop from the film place, not, not from the town council. I think the film place is proposing um, that we're hoping to move in, in October. Uh, some final adjustments to be made, as I understand it, but they will be doing uh, quite a bit of Mm -hmm. So could, could, I, could I ask if Councillor Stuck could agree we associate ourselves with that announcement rather than go out on our own? It's not approved, but it's going to go through and help. Uh, I, think, I think there'll be a press release. Mm -hmm. We'll be happy with that. I think as in, um, having been fortunate to have been involved in the early discussions with the Town Council to Get the film place, and the fact that the town council funded the original film project quite greatly, and and helped purchase and sought funding for them, and helped them get funding to get going. I think that though we are not a partner in it, we we are a community council. I think that we need to say what we think about it, and then because if we're not careful, other people who didn't even know where Buckingham was until um 2019 will um will do their own press release around this and they and that this council's got not only a pictorial record of its involvement in it, it, it many members who are no no longer on this council who were involved at the time um would find it strange if we didn't um say what the opinions of this authority was it would be for the other authorities to determine whether they agree with the application um, that's a different question altogether. But I think showing positive support for something um, would would be a good thing. And if that then coincidentally supported a latter comment from it, I think that if we're not careful, we will be in the, the behind the curve on who announces what a wonderful thing this is. And um, so I think that if we missed that opportunity, that would be my view when proposed, that's can easily be defeated, but it's been proposed and seconded, mm -hmm. and I'd rather lose the vote than um, than change it on the hook. Yes, sir. Thank you. I tend to agree with what we've been, what we've been saying because um, we did fund the film place for a number of years to advance process. Um, we helped them get to where they are and it was an aspiration of the town council that they do find other premises that were more accessible mm -hmm. um, and as we've been said Christine Strand Clark was um, a, a, um, of trying to find somewhere more accessible so and you know as the access um, steering group was also part of the town council or is but haven't met for a while um, you know I think it's it's not unheard of to say this is in the pipeline, we hope that it goes through by supporting it um, because we want everybody to be able to enjoy a, a local film place. So I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all to, to say something now, even though it's not been agreed. Sure. I, I, I don't think we're seeing that one because this information is already in the public domain anyway. Um, I think we can simply say that we were excited to be supportive. Of the plans to, you know, to move the cinema 
to the Winston building. Um, we discussed the client plan application um, and given our history, the town council being the uh, main you know, supporter, initiator, whatever, of all this, you know, some years back. This is a frame to see this happening. Yeah, you know, watch this space for more news from the, um, you know, yeah. from the yeah. public place. I, I can't imagine that. Uh, and let me be very clear. In terms of advertising, is that people know? There will be people a year from now who say, I didn't know it didn't move. <laughs> um, so, whatever we can do to actually support people's understanding knowledge of that, we can say it's a good thing. Thank you. Anyone else? We've got to propose in a second. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll try it. Yeah. So, um, so, that's all those in favor that we. I will say that my late mother in law would be really pleased being uh, her her grand her father brought the cinema to Buckingham and Bird Play. So um if she's yeah. if she is at all watching this, I'm sure she'll be pleased that, yeah. that they've got nicer seats to sit in than they did before. She's still gone with the sleep last time around. Um my, I don't think she probably showed on the wind for the wind well, third time around. So um Kieran is in one of the photographs that when the film place first opened, we moved here shortly afterwards. <laughs> And he's in the photograph with a couple of other now 20 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, at the, in the newspaper, so the film place is now open, so I've still got that photo. Yeah. I mean, all <laughs> joking aside, I mean, the, the reason the Chandler's Road was in was called Chandler's Cinema is because it was a family business. I still have the accounts in the <laughs> Um And um, of the business, but you know, I know that personally, I'm, I've always been enthusiastic to see that this is. I'm happy for me and Catherine to. Yeah, yeah. 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 By the Stigler Rings, um, it's also mm -hmm. in the conservation area, and it's also respected yeah, because it has already been turned into a dwelling house. So, members got any feeling on this? No objection. No objection. No objection. No objection. So, could we have a proposal, please, for no objection? Thank you, Anthony. Second, please. I'll second. Yeah. Thank you very much. All those in favour? Could we add the rider as well, as Catherine pointed out, um, the, the state of the building at the moment? If we could just draw attention that we, we would like yeah. to see some improvements made to the facade yes, and the past the peeling off it. Yeah, doing a different color? No. Show that. It's worth putting in things there or in the screens. Right. Um, number seven is 38 Morton Road. Right. This is quite an interesting one. It's, a, it's right next door to where we, uh, where this new development's going to be halfway up Norton Road. It's the end house. And in fact, the people in that house are one of the people who've been parking until recently mm -hmm. from approval from, from Buckinghamshire Council. But they want to basically fill in the center of the L shape on the house. Uh, back in society, we have a... no objection. No objection, John. Well, my first reaction was, How the heck is this possible? But having read the curtain, written, yeah. is everyone happy with that? Yeah, can we have a proposal? Well, no, 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 no objection. Let's not cancel the hardly seconded by Councillor Gordon here. All those in favour. We need to receive buzzers to everyone. We need to do it, do it electronically. <laughs> <laughs> um, item eight is an amended plan mm. 26 below where it's very straightforward. As Catherine showed us, yeah, it's yeah, just confirming that there is an entrance to the uh, mm. back of this house which had been left off before. Yeah. So it's just really to note that. I don't think we actually need to. That was a formal consultation. Right, it's a formal consultation. People only have a Proposal, yeah. that we accept it. Thank you, Mr. Seconder. Andy, thank you. 
All those in favor? Right, I'm the full mass temptation. Number nine is actually outside the parish because it affects us in every way because it is the front of NACO. It's, it's in, what we're looking at is entirely in the parish of Gorka. It will be looking 130 of the Ozier Way houses. Um, what the We'll come back after comments made by us, other parishes. Um, they are twisting the building through 90 degrees. They're reducing the roof height by 1.25 meters, which will bring it down to 3.75 meters above the net to bring it was five meters high. Mm -hmm. um, the main problem is obviously Buckingham Society and Lembra, they brought up the Lembra Parish Council, both asked that. It's not B8 use, but it has come back to the B8 application. And in fact, there is a letter from the people who, the haulage company, so the storage company, HRJ Enterprises, saying we have agreed terms with the dealer group for them to build the unit and then sell it to us. And the proposed operation to B8 use storage and distribution um, are still talking about 50 jobs over the next four years. Um, there are some issues that the highways have raised, so what from our neighboring council or cut in November. And in fact, I think probably quite a good thing to do is to be followed what Walk in November said. They haven't voted against it, but they've made a number of that of observations, which the head coach might be sorted out. I don't know if you want to go through all those now or yeah, I'll tell you what they said anyway. Um, but this is called Cork and Member Council. So they feel the roof height should be reduced to the same level as the adjoining building, not 3.5 meters above. And they're concerned about employment and traffic generation. They think there'd be far fewer jobs, but more traffic. They think the yard space is arguably insufficient with any more than a small number of HGVs. There's also concerns that HG, HGVs would have to wait outside in Ozil Way um, to enter, wait until the gates open for them. Um, and planning officers may wish to consider whether distribution operation is appropriate for this site given its restricted dimensions and awkward configuration. It pointed out it faces the entrance to 120 house on the state. Make the point it's visible from Lembra and parts of Cadbury as well as being adjacent to the residential areas of Bucking. Planning officers should consider the lighting associated with this development, ensure that it's appropriate and not spread unnecessarily outside the boundaries of the site. They also ask that um, Lembra Road, which is a park rivalry at this stage, in Buckingham and Lembra, is kept clear and made good. Said that its use could be encouraged. So they haven't per se come out against it, but they've, they've made all those comments. Mm. We feel those are appropriate comments for us to join them. Yeah. John? Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Um, and I think we, I mean, solar panels have been mentioned. I mean, it seems we have seen an incredible shame at a building of this size, with this amount of blue space. Should not be given over to solar panels. So, could we encourage the developer to consider that? Because it would be, well, in the current climate of, of business costs, we were, you know, interested in the madness not to put solar panels in the So, if we can put that as a right there, in principle, I'd I'm not objecting to what I agree with. So, yeah, I think the comments from Gork on that counts. Um, but I would say that, well, I'm always very good to be like, yeah, because we're in the middle of drought, that kind of makes sense too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Electric car charging points? Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 They've got, got, I mean, two of them. They've got, bit. They've got four five policy dictates. Two. two. 43 parking spaces. Could you do with more? Could you do with more? I would say at least a quarter. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, only two disabled spaces. Yeah. Gotcha. And people on the low side as well. They well, one thing, of course, they have they have been asked to enlarge the parking spaces, meet the new regulations, 2.8 by 5 meters. I say new regulations, the current regulations. But some of you might have read in the national press lately that there is now a move to make the minimum parking base size even bigger, given the Cars have increased by 50% in length since 1997, which is one of the last regulations have gone on. If you have parents and have children, that's the no. one of our arguments for years. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone said what John said, you're happy to have yeah. those two demands. Yeah. Yeah. Solar panels, grey water, more car yeah. uh, parking points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that counts for all the planning applications. Yeah. So the question is, do we want to make this an objection or we approve the fact with the full trust or we take into consideration? We've got a store clock, Jane. Are they objecting? They have objected, no, they just made alterations. Because you suggested that we follow their line. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, so that's all. So we need a proposal yeah. for that. Aren't you proposing it? <laughs> no, you're proposing it. <laughs> but didn't you propose I, I, it? I'll second it. I'll second it. I forget the terms. Right, so all those in favour? We'll follow the discussion. Thank you very much. I know Catherine and Nick did a great job on that. Thank you. 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 Right. Um, yeah, discharge of conditions. We have had Notice the discharge of conditions for the land south of those away development, design code, phasing plan, and biodiversity. Um, you'll be aware that also from the pack tonight that Roger Newell has made a lot of um, very pertinent comments, it's mainly that on, on his own right as a former planning officer, but I presume it's on behalf of the Buckingham Society as well. The Buckingham Society will be um, submitting another objection. Buckingham Society name on it, but basically, of course, Roger has uh, informed our meeting of, of, of all the points that will be echoed in, in, uh, in another submission. Um, right. I mean, I just like to say, I think there's an element of bamboozling because this huge number of documents with pretty pictures, and actually, there's no substance for the site itself. And it's very easy to be lost in, in architectural drawings, which seem to bear no relation to what might go up. Hmm. Right. So, in addition to what Roger has said, I've, I've added a couple of points as well that there should be no shared street services, mm -hmm. as is proposed for tertiary roads and private drives, yeah. no block paving. Mm -hmm. These are things have been against for a long time since. Yeah. They still showed up their short yes, and then also they brush off electric car charging points. On page 43 with quote consideration to be given to electric car charging facilities. That's not good enough. No, All dwellings no. should have car charging points, whether yeah. or not the, there's car their, their parking bays are remote from the property or not. It should all have yeah. access to it. Yeah. Yeah. And this, yeah. is what, this is something we're going to be pushing off to for. Mm -hmm. A new neighborhood plan. Mm -hmm. Anthony? Uh, can we add, can we add a, um, like to so, that? I didn't see anything really here about fiber broadbands and, and the other facilities. Like, we've not been off the thing. Is that was there something there? Because okay. really, while they're building, while they're building a development, it's the perfect yeah. opportunity okay. to completely wire it out. Yeah, I'll well, make two of that then. Please, because I wish list. I yeah, firstly, um, we should thank Roger for the what mm. uh, uh, spectacularly detailed um, and lesson in how to look at a planning application and, and, and what it is, which is not a surprise, is it? That everybody can write this um, in any way, shape, or form. But I would ask you know, personally have a, a sort of copy of this sent to me, not attached to the agenda, because I want to use this as a separate information. Um, okay, thank you. Um, but I do think that there are also some other elements within this 
this development, which has got planning permission, which was against the neighbor plan. We all know the history of it. Um, there's going to be problems with this site going forward. If, if, and I think you, we need to consider this area very carefully because it's now not only going to be an area of land in two parishes, it's going to be an area of land in two wards. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be quite problematic because you're going to have residents who live in half of that estate going to be in this new, if it goes through the new steeple played ward, and the other half of the residents going to be in Buckingham Wood. And this is going to be quite difficult for them to understand where they live, who is their area representatives, and um, and how they where they access service, because they're not going to be going from there to steeple played and surgery for their services. They're going to be going to small practice surgery, but they'll be in a different ward paying council tax to um, Buckinghamshire Council, but also paying council tax to the parish of Walker, not to this parish. So that might be something they think is a jolly good thing. But I think also when it comes to future decisions about education and whatever, I think it's something we do need to talk to the outsiders about the settled size of the community. It's, it doesn't seem very logical to have a community in one estate in Buckingham built against the wishes of the community into electoral parishes. Um, now, um, I did ask questions about the industrial estate um, areas, which will be, it, the lines on the map in the consultation isn't that clear. Um, and yes, the industrial estate area stays with Buckingham. But I do think we need to separate to this when we discuss this in October, I think, before yeah. also that is somewhere before council, is to be focused on that fact that we can't have set in communities divided not only by parishes but by um, wards within a Buckingham area. Because their address will say Buckingham and yeah. they will be in the state. Well, so. then, if I could just a third hand clerk and Clay, we have got the sound for the October 10th meeting, haven't we? Do they have asked to come and speak to us. Yeah. So, we say that. No, we're talking about the boundary. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the new county. county yes, board. It's on the next one. That's probably at that meeting. So, Robin, if we could just. I think we need to discuss it. I think it also. It's already set it. on the agenda. Yeah, I know. To see this application, you're discussing a bit what I've seen about it. This is getting a very absolutely complicated area. Yeah. Mm. Of course, what we're looking at tonight is just this charge of conditions. But thank you, Robin, for looking at that. Um, so, what we've got three applications in front of us. We've done the design code. Um, we, did we take a vote on that? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. We haven't yet. Um, so, John? Just, just, well, I think everyone's right to raise the issue that we have not a done deal, and there are arrangements for seeing the fish seal. We've seen it in other wars, it's not ideal. But there's a huge discussion on, on, on that. The point that I'd like to raise is about the X5 stuff. I couldn't see but the, I, the X5 stuff. Yeah. Where is that being proposed to be put in? It seems it goes in one direction, it's going to be very close to the other X5 stuff. I'm not sure that we're going to have an extra X5 stop, whether one being so close to the existing one of our test stops is worth it. But it's going to be. A little bit further, um, like uh, west, so that people from the new estate on the road might therefore access it more easily. Um, that does make sense. So, where on this map are they proposing that there to be an extra stop? I think you could safely say it's just off the left hand, top left hand corner. <laughs> top left hand corner. Okay, so near the end of the corner. Okay. Pretty, so, pretty near the roundabout. Um, okay. That's the westbound stop. The um, eastbound stop is over the other side of the roundabout by the new garage. And, and as that's if stage I was going to say, yeah. as stage goes to green, because we know they, they, we they, they, they held out also against another stop in Buckingham. We, we wanted one on the road. Well, the only place where an exercise stop would be on the eastern side of the track of the road. And that's if we want is for this one to take effect and the test road to go. Mm -hmm. We definitely don't want that. No, no. Of course we do. 
Um, um, I mean, people say, oh, but Vista's got no stops. Mm -hmm. Vista's got two weather stations. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and the bigger population as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Vista also paid for it, or had paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. And it, it, it's, it's like the bus service that's intended to go through the only part of the Georgia state. <laughs> like, like the one that they still do. So yeah, yeah. The um, upgrade of one particular road. Yeah. Upgrading mm -hmm. number is nothing. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So, could we just take a vote then first on number 10, which is the design code? Um, is everyone happy to go ahead with what, as we've discussed, with our extra things added? Yeah. Which list, yeah. so, can we have a proposal for that, please? Yeah. So, are we, are we actually objecting to this? Okay. Oh, you can't just at this stage because it's still so fluid, isn't it? Really? Yeah. This is all the stuff. I would like to ask a question about how found on the board. It's going to be the box. Right. Because it concerns me with the private drives, which yeah. are actually along the back of the streets of Martin Abbey, and the tertiary roads, which are the shared service block roads, mm. are not going to get, and they are no more than the four roads. Yeah, we're growing. So is it? I mean, I, 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 I just like to, to say, oh no, we're not, we're not in, interested in adopting what they build. So we know what it's done. We have to accept this, but with our recommendations, or we reject it with our, um, on those grounds. I mean, they could easily just say, well, forget fucking. Well, that's right. It pays no attention or terror to the vision of the do we want what they've got? Or do we want what we want? Do we want what we want? I think you. But it's been approved by them. This charge of condition. Yeah, yeah. What the problem is, you see, it's like two weeks, it's usually the outline stage, and then it's right. sometimes set in front of you, and everybody's got to do what it says. Right. Well, what would members wish to do? We have a chance here to try and reverse mm. what they want to do. I think we should object yeah. um, because I think that gives us a little bit more leverage yeah. than accepting this. It's only mm -hmm. a number of objections we have concerns about broadband, we have concerns about road services, and mobility, we have concerns about solar energy and EV ports, we have concerns about a wide array of matters. Um, and also, we don't have the full detail. We should give proper, proper consideration. So, for all those reasons, I think we should get. Yeah. second for that. Can I give them this? Oh, yeah, yeah. This isn't the plan application has been agreed. It's subject to terms and conditions. This isn't something you're objecting to. You're raising concerns about it because you're not objecting. This isn't a planning application. So we keep no, using no. the terms object. But we, we've got to say we disagree with them. Exactly, but we can object to this. Yeah. But, but as long as we're clear, we're not actually talking about We're trying to do the constructive and get, get them to write some better stuff. Yeah, I, I, I just wonder whether. I'm What's in front of us is an application for approval of detailed subject condition 8 design code. And we're objecting, you know, yeah. being supposed to object to that. On the following grounds, we don't what we don't want um, setting yes. stone when we get to the ADP reserve matters. Well, because we'll just say reserve matters, oh, well, it's according to the design code that we've already agreed, and then mm -hmm. we'll to section 106. Mm -hmm. So, I'm oh, sorry, Margaret, first. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Would it be reasonable to say words to the effect of um, we might be more minded to agree with this if? all of the roads were developed to such a stage that they would be uh, suitable for adoption start. by the local, appropriate local authority. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just Laysill is just close to being adopted, mm. having dealt with it from the onset. Mm. Um, and now they've just received letters from Swift Fiber to say that they like to get the road up. Now they, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're all really welcomed that letter with absolute gust joy. So, Margaret, I mean, could we add that? Because we've got a long, long list of things we don't like about mm. 
It's not just about the roads, no. it's everything. Including that. One. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you. I think we can be a molly and sort of object. Yeah. That's it. We talk about black and white, object, not object. Is there not a middle one where we, we chose to reserve, uh, reserve judgment until proper uh, reading of the objections we have raised, right. along with lender? In other words, put them together until they're considered, uh, we reserve judgment. So it's kind of a dead I, uh, I was I was aiming to that. On some positive suggestions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we do have a better proposal and the second one. Yeah. Oh. That we object on the yeah. following grounds. We've got a, a wish list of things. Yeah. We just have felt that perhaps neither for or against is quite yeah. what we wanted to achieve. That's all. Well, we do have a wide bet with the planning application. So that's right. We're minded too, but this is slightly yeah. different. So I don't know. Right, all those in favour then of um, Tom's proposal. Yeah. Yes, that was. Yeah, thank you. Um, the other two are phasing plan, which is condition two, and biodiversity condition three, which um, Carolyn, is what are backing society going to involve themselves in those? Or? Um, the only point we wanted to make on the phasing plan is that phase one, which I think is the one opposite. The new warehouse. Yeah, 130 houses, um, 120. It percent. has no cycle track to the proposed bus stop. Mm -hmm. We've got a cycle um, track leading down through the other phases. Phase, I don't know. Phase two and three will have to wait quite a while for. And phase one, rather, we'll have to wait an enormous amount of time for the cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got our ride out on a horse, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> we've got to do this, we? Yeah, we've got to do it, yes. So, uh, John? It's a kind of odd way of doing it, because in my experience, um, when they start building places, they want to build places you can see, you know, on the main road. And, and therefore, that suggests to me that phase two. If they go phase three, ought to be phase one. Mm -hmm. It would make more sense for the promotion of the floor. And therefore, that would be sort of a couple of problems with the cycle. Which ought to be in our objection to the non vehicular access, which has been our problem with our non objection. But I would say no, we don't accept the um, phase and plan. We would advocate that phase one is done first, then, then the existing phase two. So phase three becomes phase one, phase two is phase two, and then the last bit is currently phase one, phase three. I don't know if we're in a position to call that. <laughs> this, is, this is a commercial decision. Mm. Mm. Well, say we're advising them commercially, it makes more sense to make sure it's phase one. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. Yeah. It does make more sense. Some should should cancel that rather than sell. If they want to sell their houses, they want to put them on the road that people see. Yeah. Unless they wanted to build phase one before that factory, factory building goes up, so that they <laughs> sell it. <laughs> uh, I haven't realized yeah, yeah. 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 to be able to do it. Term year come children got a point where they get to school. They have to do a certain proportion of the proportion of the household. So it might be. No, that's, that's it. Get that, John. The last part of that is affordable housing, which they have, which they're obliged to build before the main site. Well, the affordable housing is an integrated throughout the whole state. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's against yeah. art, that's yeah. against yeah, no, it, other it, it, is, it is in small groups, yeah. um, but it's um, it's not really the nice place. I'm just wondering if we're, that's beyond our a bit. I mean, um, oh, I'm just to it. I don't know what it was. But yeah. Carolyn, we should take on more what you said, I think. And, and actually, but, I think I might say, I haven't planned on that, that the play areas are also in phases two 
So is that is that um, an objection to face or is it just simply that we draw attention to it? Yeah, I think I will draw attention to it. Yeah. Could we have a proposal for that one? I propose uh, to draw the carriers. So phase two, that we draw attention to that is no cycle way. Phase one. Phase, oh, phase one, sorry. Yeah. And no fail. And no fail. Mm. Thank you. Second. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, All those in favor. And finally, the third one, which is uh, biodiversity. Do you want to have any comments on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John. Where are the answers? <laughs> as far as I can tell, there's no major water course through this site, is there? Where is that? I don't know, there's a brook. Uh, there is a brook going north of the natural pond, but they are putting attenuation ponds in this one. And they think the lost is more than a brook. What bothers me is they've lost the dormice. Yeah. yeah. They've lost the dormice. Well, there were dormice there a couple of years ago when they did a survey, and then there aren't any now. But then dormice are very small. They also they make great cat food. Um, um, Unfortunately, that if they do have any dormice at there, I'm sure the cats will see them off very quickly. Unfortunately, but they're not great habit. They're not great runners. They tend to do it while they've got a nice name. They can sleep. No, they tend to die. They're just sleeping dormant. Well, they call dormice. They probably did a survey in December and all They were told about it. Well, yes, and they they did know because some of the environmental people. When we had old surveys, they did a survey before lockdown, and it was too old to do a new one. Yeah. And that's why they discovered they couldn't find it. Yeah. So, unless John wants the author included, um, can, I, can we say there's no objection to no. phase three? Because mm -hmm. I'll propose that, please. Just no. Uh, you propose it, please. John, second it, please. Actually, all those in favour? It's the same old story. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Let's start with the three. Uh, Discharge of conditions. We will see this again, of course, when it comes back to reserve matters. That, that would be an even, even longer one, I think. But the, it perhaps the committee would find the bank Roger for what he's done. Yeah. 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 Really good job. Yeah. Thank you very much. But not just consultations, but we are going to have a look at it. Um, 33 Willow Drive. Um, they have applied the stick of law to extend a vehicle access. Lots of public highway, they want to put blocks over it over time. That public footpath to extend the front of the drive. Um, well, there's no comment from anyone, I think. It's not even a picture I could print it off on uh, Google Earth of the site. Ah, I think it's this one I've written. Yes. All right, okay, I missed that one. Right. Yeah, I thought there was one on the other Yeah, this is, a, this is a big one. Um, Margaret. Yes, I think I object in principle to somebody sort of commandeering the public footpath. Um, that's it's a what land, I wanted to say, really. It's a land grab, isn't it? Yeah. It is, and it will, um, I think it will look strange, actually. And, um, mm. you know, it's one thing to request a dropped curb to enable the no. Access. It's another thing to change the entire appearance mm. of the public footpath. Five square meters and what? So no, I think, don't. If you could pass it all around, so so. So they want to grab this for a path. No, I think it's just no, it's a bit of steel. Yeah, in front of the. Front of it. So they want to see that. Yeah, and there's no comment from highways. Yeah, which is very surprising. Mm. It's fine. Mm. Okay. No. John, I want to do it. Yes. I mean, my concern is if the plan is generally has some really weird access drop curves, lack of drop curves throughout it. Um, they walk through the estate all the time and so on. 
my concern would be is if they get to go ahead and do this, then the current drop curve drop there may disappear. Um, or it might be it might be made less, I don't know. So long as the I, I don't have a great objection because the path doesn't go anywhere. So he goes into what we make their path and seeds. So I personally don't have a great objection to this. Five houses on that side of the road. This is cool. When it, when it stops, the path stops. Yeah, it stops on page 25 um, or 27. The path stops by the blue car. So, all they're trying to do is basically spread that a bit further up so, so that the car stops a bit earlier in line with the side of their house. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a great problem with that. So long as there's adequate fur dropping for people who are in buggies or push chairs, wheelchairs. And there is a subsidy to the existing Yeah, there's a drain there as well. Yeah. But they can take a look at it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Councillor Gatey. It seems like a land grab sort of thing. And the gully there, who's going to maintain that? You know, who's, who's taking responsibility for that? Are the householders? Do you wish to make a proposal to be objective? Yes, maybe we object to it. Thank you, Councillor Welby. Second, please. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on it? All those in favour that we object on the grounds that it is uh, appropriating public. Yeah, thank you. Right, yes, so yes, okay. four of us. Yeah. Um, those against? Who against? Extension. Um, so we will find an objection on that. The grounds of um, trees, we've got trees in Well Street. Ash tree and sycamore tree. Um, I think I believe they've already been held. Is that right? Just looking back through the web. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the other one is in Wagland's Gardens between Brooklyn's Lane and Chandler's Road. Two trees, both protected, a lime and a black The lime yeah, they claim the cyclist is dying or dead as well. It's very concerning, both these trees. There was a refusal um, in 2008 by ABBC to allow the crown to be reduced on these the cypress on the grounds that it could um it could harm a protected tree in the future. Um, we've got past that one. 31 protected trees in Yeah. Again, just, uh, you can't argue the fact it's dying in dirt, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. One does wonder how much the buildings the buildings are contributed to that. Anyway, there we are. Um notification of planning decisions made Mighty Morton Road, um, part two and part one story side new extensions. Been approved, we have no objections. Twickenham Road, it's the rear extension which we opposed until there's a drawing at the gate. We've still never had that drawing, but um, it has been approved. And Catherine points out here previous application showed the gate is still in the gap in the wall and the same height as the wall, and that approval is still valid. So hopefully, it oh, did what we want. Um, yeah, we've just done the, uh, the other tree one there, which is approved with candle to support. Um, all the copper steam, filling of ash, filling of um, filling of plum, which is too close to help them to warm with the strong white and dark. Thank you. Any comments on the trees? Maybe we have to have a question. Is that we're looking to be more robust in the new neighborhood plan? Mm -hmm. Um, item eight, but into council matters and publication. You know, that one by council present. Yeah, um, try not to part from the fact that when we do lots of things just to concentrate on because I looked at the time getting on. Um, we've got quite a lot of this stuff in there, so 
Yeah, I'm happy to do lots of things, but I don't really need to know about them now with the council. Um, but to concentrate on the things which are to deal with it underneath, um, which was um, 9.2, just to briefly comment on what we said in the charter. My disappointment as a councillor on the charter is that it didn't really seem to be matching its um, its grand aspirations. When when the council bid to become a single unitary, part of their bid was the fact that they would be working closely and integrally with parishes and organisations and such, such and that's all part of it. This seems to tell us what we want here, but unfortunately, we just listen to discussions tonight. It didn't seem to match. I think what we really need to do is um is use this document as a response document. So what I'm suggesting is that that when we have something, when they've done something which is averse to their own parish charter, we say, well, you said you were going to consult with the parishes on this, and you said it in your charter, and sort of use their own agreed charter. As a, as a means of holding them to account, because otherwise we could say you haven't done that, and I say, well, where? Well, we can use this. It says, you know, about the on parishes, outside organisations, societies, and different people doing it, and um, and it's a very thin document, isn't it? Really, I mean, it, I mean, after all that time of um, shadow authority and authority, we managed to get about two, three, four pages. I mean, that's took a hell of a lot of writing, I think. That, and we probably, Roger Neal could have probably done it in two hours. Um, um, and probably wrote something more um, collegiate and, um, and, and factual. But um, I suppose this is what you get when you have such, such important subgroups as they do to sort out the local plan. Um, it reflects the aspirations of people in them. So I do think this is a worry and a concern. And it just says a lot of document. But I do think we should just use this line by line in our responses to them on matters which come up and, and state it's you to bring this and you're not doing it. Thank you, Robert. Good advice. Yeah, yeah, good. Excellent. I'm sure they read them, we hope they read them, whatever. But I did. Um, is it all right if I move on to yeah, your speed limit? Your yeah. theme um, is an appendix. Sorry, hang on, can we still talk about the charter? Yep, so we'll move on from that item. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Not to ask a question, but Well, I want to make a comment about what we as a planning group should do. Um, and the problem might be able to have it as well. But on page 50 or 56, the first bullet point says, um, Buckinghamshire Council will adopt a statement of community involvement regarding consultation with parish and town councils and family issues. So I think we should write to the cabinet member and say, when will we, when will we be involved as per the rest of the charter in helping the draft that statement of community involvement? Because if they don't involve us, in drafting that statement, yeah, and then rather should say can or hold for the yeah. whole chance. So I think we should just say presume when are we going to be involved in helping them ah. to draft statement of community involvement. Good point. Yeah. So can we make that an action? Well, right yeah. to the government member yeah. and ask yeah. that simply. Yeah, right. Yeah. Could you make that a proposal? I'm just I'm making that proposal. thank you. Maybe I'm yeah. a second it, Lisa. Yeah. Second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Yeah, we all know. Yeah. 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 Um, Thank you. It might be worth just writing to two cabinet members because they'll say you wrote the wrong one. This has been done by um, Steve. Um, but it's, Steve um, Bambrick? No, not Steve Bambrick. 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 It comes so in, many. Yeah, um, Steve, we just mm. this was came through the community board type issue. So, um, but you also need to write to Peter Strachan because this is that element with it there. Because I think that it went to um, cabinet and it was an interesting conversation at cabinet, a lot of backslapping. And um, but it was a very thin document. Um, 
But I think you need to write, uh, it'll come to me in a minute, yeah, yeah. Jen, there's no... Just let that trim there, Robin. I will do. No, um, Anything yeah. else on the charter? Yeah. Where else yeah. Robin, could, could you throw Stephen if you want to Yeah. Um, on the Ginger Road speed limit, um, I put, there's an appendix here, which is the response, which is horrendous, isn't it? Um, we could probably all agree that without um, nodding through it. Um, those, we've all been in one way or another, historically or past, in the fact that we want to, um, when dealing with the estate, and both inside the town council, everyone's been involved with that estate. and. And the aspirations in that was to um, to get the railway walk tarmac. So motion which I put forward here is just a, a simple motion which I think could be agreed uh, is that we um, propose the motion that we ask Buckingham Council to implement since the information of the 40 mile an hour limit which is against all of our hopes and aspirations if we push them to get on with the Section 106 agreement, which is for the um, silver and gold fields um, development, to do the um, cycling. Um, because if we don't actually along the, if we don't actually get that put in, which I believe to have was meant to have been implemented before the first occupation mm -hmm. of the property. Well, I think we're well behind that now. I think we can safely say that there's more than one property up there. Um, we've even been through an election with those residents, so they're definitely residents. So if we don't do this motion, I think it's simple just to say that we want to meet the cabinet member because it's his duty to actually um, see that they bring this stuff into place. Now, we've been to council and I've raised questions and I've done where it is and, 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 and the sheer disappointment, and I, I know John and I have probably talked to him on Facebook, and the sheer disappointment with this element of that estate not being delivered, and the fact that the children need to access a safe walking route to school, yeah. because the decision against all our wishes to impose a 40 mile an hour limit has made it so important that we have to get this cycleway mm -hmm. safe walking route to get to secondary education. We can do nothing against that at this stage, although we may be able to review it later. And it is an obligation, and it is something that was agreed. And it is something that when we agreed the original planning application, we all discussed, and we, yeah, and we and as a group of people, a group of councils, we managed to get them to construct the roundabout in advance. And this and the cycleway was the second big thing about getting them to school safely. So I think I hope the motion to be agreed. I hope we can uh, move forward with one and 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 and, and ask them when they're going to actually deliver this. And I think the additional information in the motion can be put in clauses in the section 106, which our chairman's nodding, which is ready in its entirety, um, um, which I think we probably all have in our lives one way or another now. So I do think we've just got to do something, because I can't yeah, we're all concentrate sure. that children need somewhere safe to go. I help Robin compose this motion, so I'll be yeah. very happy to second it. Yeah, thank you. Margaret? Yes, thank you. Just that... On, on the point D, there is a glimmer of hope there, isn't there, that they've actually allowed for the possibility <coughs> of a further reduction in the speed limit, dependent on that yeah. future survey. So, you know, there is a glimmer of hope there. We'll yeah. probably have to pay for that survey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, I think you're, it is a glimmer of hope. We must never lose sight of a glimmer of hope. But... Um, it will always agree with hope that they might have made the right decision in the first place. Well, yeah. um, but this isn't about that speed limit. It's because of that decision we need to push on with this. The two things are separate and 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 though linked by the development, they are not, as the chairman and I talked about, they're not directly linked together. So um, we need to push on with this, I think, and, and, and be strong on it because um, it was in our neighbourhood plan. It was part of our long-term working as a council with Buckingham Society and other partners, and it hasn't been delivered. And we um, we we've exchanged words and conversations on this to make sure we got it close to what it needed to be. So I hope that we can we can second it, we can agree it. And I just before I come to you, John, I'll just clarify that this 
particular motion is about the uh, footpath on the development up to the bypass up here, 421. It's quite separate from the other one, which connects the development to the railway walk. Correct. Um, that's one that was in progress. Paul was looking after it on his town council. You remember it goes across St. Lombard's Park. There's discussion whether it should be green and stone or should it be more solid. Yeah, not inviting. Um, I can tell you that in my conversations that I'm continuously having, um, but I talk, um, the, um, they have agreed in principle the developer to, um, I, I, I didn't share the, not my correspondence with the clerk, which I'm happy to share with the committee, that they are more minded to agree the footpath in a permanent state across them, which is what we all wanted, but it's nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. We can't, that's in the section 106 agreement for the development. This is in a separate section 106 agreement, which was in the rights of way agreement for the development. The roundabout and the road on the outside was in the 278 agreement for the development. So we have to be specific that we stay on this area, though I'm happy to. Well, I would say, 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 yeah. I've been told they're lying to you, but I have a question. It's not yeah. concrete, but you're doing like this one, it's supposed to have been done before. It should have been done before. It's concrete, it's done. John, you've been waiting patiently now. Yes, I mean, so as I understand, then we're talking about the full length of the railway walk in the city. It's on the city road, it's on the city road. And we're talking about that being paved. I mean, most half of that is kind of thing that is paved. But we're talking about putting in a lighting system for that whole length of it as well. Because um, I'm not going to be a to raise a diversity issue here. Yeah. Putting a light on that part. And there are some good reasons to do that. But that will change the ecology of that area by putting lights in there. But if the ecology people are happy with that. Um, it's got to be mixed. Mm. Sorry? It's got to be mixed or it won't be used. Yeah, mm. true. And on Darwin's and all. Yeah. Um, right. So, yes, also. I mean, I mean it, it's not just the secondary school, is it? Because you'll be able to get the traffic free. Yeah. And almost they still, because you'll be bypassed. Mm. Opposite the entrance to the industrial estate, yeah. where the crossings are. The missing link is a crossing, of course, across the Tindrick Road. You have to cross the road, walk down a little bit, and then cross back again. Because there's no bar on that yeah. side. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem. This is nothing more than trying to. It's mostly it's not seeking to rewrite what's there, it's trying to no. achieve what's, in, okay. what's possible. All the other things are conversations which I believe will happen. Town clerk's right to be cautious that an email saying that it, it's going to be done isn't the same as a proper correspondence with the whole agreement. It's absolutely right on that area. But, or indeed drawings, yeah. We can put lots of drawings. Um, but I do think that we do need to push on because if we don't speak for them, the residents there, children will probably be sending their own children to school by the time that it's constructed. Even if we get formal agreement to get on with it, it will take a while to implement. And the councils has agreed that they will construct it in section 106. Now, theaters you can have trouble getting them to do any construction work, whatever, that's all going to be long in the tooth, but we've got to get on with this and get them to, it's also, we are a landowner of part of the land. So we have an obligation to our own land if there's any negotiation about how the money is spent, which is us to discuss it's the office. Yeah. Well, Margaret, you had a number. Oh, well, no, thank you. It's just on that point about the access, you know, having to cross Tindrick Road and then back again. But I believe there's a proposal for a, a link way from directly from the um, from the new estate onto. Yes, yes that's so, so they wouldn't then have to no, do that. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have to go anywhere near the Tindrick Road. Okay. Um, yes. Thank well, you. I mean, we don't, we can 
discuss that as a separate thing or together. Yeah. We've, got, we've got to make sure we discuss the thing we discuss yeah, yeah. here, not the thing outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Have a second. Put this to the vote. Yeah. 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 I asked that we through do press release mm -hmm. that we've agreed that and that we're asking for it because. I think that the residents up there will be grateful to know that we're on their side. Yeah. Yeah. And Councillor Cole has had a very um, good success rate when he's uh, gone public with things. Yeah. He's never had things done. He's got that knack. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, 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 if it's great to have the co op. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, um, Robin, nine four, the eight four two yeah. one. Your written question. Thank yeah. you for doing that. Now this this is we did a written question which went to really expressing what I thought was the concerns of the, the town council and had not been consulted. If you read um, the response from the cabinet member, it's hardly um, suggests um, that it matches this document's aspirations. Um, the um, parish charter, because it suggests that we will meet you at such and such, and basically we're not going to earn anything to the autumn of 2022, and we're going to um, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then uh, we'll come back to you with a feasibility study. Now, what you will not know, there was there was a study in 2015 by Ringway Jacobs, to which I gave them a copy of the other day. Uh, which happened to be in my interest, um, which cites where the road would possibly go. What I'm also concerned about is, and this is really something we do need to discuss, is the Section 106 agreement for the OG of Way development states specifically that it's going to make a contribution to the jewelling of the bypass. It also says it's going to make a contribution to a, a roundabout which has got absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, and it and also it states, which means the Buckinghamshire plan, the transport plan must still be in play because that was part of it. So my view is with this, I've got great concerns that we now are being told that we can't, as a town council, talk about this. We're not going to be talked about this yet. Decisions are being taken in the public um, to agree section one hundred six you know, to determine spending of money on an area of the road which this study will refer to and i think that is most alarming um hardly um what i call um flat line working and property working yeah. basically said we spoke to the buckinghamshire council <laughs> the Wuppie, they spoke to me and some councils um myself and some councils um that didn't help anyone in this really because you weren't part of the conversation and that was a difficult conversation, a difficult meeting. So I, I think that I need some help in whether my concerns are real concerns, because I'm thinking we go back, I would go back to Cabinet and um, ask you some questions around detail in the sense that this response states we're not talking to you, but they're already determined section 106 agreement, mm -hmm. which determines what's going to happen on that section of the road. Otherwise, that section 106 agreement is erroneous mm -hmm. um, because it says it's going to join it, which affects <coughs> the residents on the opposite side of the road in Embleton Way, which that section 106 agreement refers to using Embleton Way as part of their um, areas for community space. But not only now, it's going to dual the road, taking away the green, presumably the green belt from Embleton Way. And this is really concerning because whatever happens with this study, if it happens or doesn't happen, it would affect the way people live their lives with the worry of it. And we need to get some clarity around it. And I, I, I'd be interested in members whether they feel as frustrated by the response as I am myself, but I think it was less than um, forthcoming. What's frustrating is we should be involved at the start of it, not at the end of it. Yeah, and of course, yes. that's the important part of the job. Yeah, absolutely agree with it. It's going to be emerging early next year. Well, we're over halfway through 22. I would say, can we get involved now? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That will be my response to this email. Yeah. Saying thanks for your information. Many things are well advanced. We would love to get involved now in the discussion. So, would you like to propose something along the lines that you know the concern to note that money is section 106 money has already been allocated to widening the current bypass without any consultation about alternatives? Yeah, absolutely. So something along those lines. And, and also, it's rather jumping gun. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're getting. Wouldn't that's the whole point. point. It's, it's, yeah. It's it's shaming in terms of the books of the That's mm -hmm. like yeah. Robin's question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so all of that, I think. Yeah. Yes. I, what I would yeah. like to do if with agreement, I'd do it anyway, but I'd rather do it with everyone's agreement, is is keep this in the public because when we write a letter to the cabinet member to respond, he might not respond for some considerable time. But there's a cabinet meeting in September. And it would be awfully nice for me to turn up and ask him a additional question based upon the information we know because his answer suggests that no decisions have been taken i would suggest that that, does it, that answer doesn't reflect the realities that decisions have been taken about the and then let him unpick that because um my fear is based on what's happened is we'll write a lovely letter to them which can be done as well um but putting a question into the public domain is much better because he's got to answer it. We can then, that is a public record. Anyone who lives along that from Osier Way, the new residence to Embleton Way, to Laysill, to Mead Way, and we'll, we'll all be able to see what he said. And we need to keep it in the public domain because otherwise it will disappear and, 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 and trench it down. And I can do that, but I want to do it with your agreement and with the help I propose that we agree with what Robert is saying. Give a second, please. Lisa, thank you very much. And I work with Catherine on that. What, Carol, what we're doing is writing a question, which a supplementary question to this question, which I will take, I will submit to Cabinet. I need to do very soon, immediately, almost, because I won't be able to do it next week. Um, so um, I, I do it myself, but it will. But I'd rather reflect the views of everyone here so that it, I'm not actually just doing what I want to do. Which I could do it with you, yeah. We're concerned that money has already been allocated mm -hmm. for the improvement of the existing yeah. bypass before any other alternatives have been. Yeah, but we need to consult him. But paraphrase back. We need to paraphrase back his response to him. In light of your response, X, what you said, clearly yeah. you said, we now know that this has been approved. I'll just put the proposal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all right. Um, I mean, I could write it, but I'd want to do it. I want to work with everyone. Not, not with. Yeah, you know what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. While we're on this subject, could I please just draw everyone's attention that not only the Ozio Way section on the six money um, is being portioned towards the old uh, the Stratford Road roundabout, but also money from Morton Road 3 under section 106. £260,000 has been allocated to the same roundabout. I did send you a photo all the photo wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me see. But left, there is already a left hand turn lane, mm -hmm. um, which I've never seen traffic through. And I just always move in there. Mm -hmm. It's not, not that huge amount of traffic coming out of parking at any time. Um, so we've got two lot, two separate section 106 um, agreements, which are both putting money towards the roundabout we don't want. And as I said in my email, it's uh, Nearly a quarter of a million pounds towards the white elephant from Morton Road. Yeah, and we don't know how much from those away. It's 840,000 contribution to the Buckingham transport strategy, but that's only one of four things they're suggesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, my, my point on that is we just need to oppose this roundabout, it, it changes the roundabout because it's they're not needed. It's been like that for 10 years, and it's always worked. This thank God. Um, I don't know if you saw um, Sheena's reply to your email where she said she didn't, didn't know whether filter would mean that there's no need to stop. Um, but she totally agrees that there's never been an issue up there and yeah. is spending um, developing money on something that is we don't know is needed. And all the points, yeah, yeah. all the points we just discussed, 
Exactly the same. And the steep bank alongside it, you're not talking about hundreds of thousands, you're probably talking about millions to fiddle that in and then create another lane on the, on the bypass. Which they want, I don't know if they want to do that bit as well, dual carriageway. They haven't done it, but they haven't told us that. John? With the greatest of respect, Chair, I think we're doing a wrong here yeah, by adding in something that actually is not really done. Because we're responding to the point of the, of the, uh, of the email from the Council of Order. I don't think we can add in that. It's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's, we're talking about the 8421 bypass, which is his part of it. It's not, it's the 8422. Huh? The roundabout you're referring to is the 8422. I still think it's a different section 106. I think we'll be we'll be reducing the impact of what we have to say about the dueling of the road near Embleton, uh, Embleton Way by wrapping in. Well, I'm, I'm so, very happy to leave it to the next agenda. We yeah, have, I think we should do like, yeah, okay, that. That's, that's a fair point. Okay. I think what you have to recollect with this is. <laughs> what they're doing, anyone who can remember reading the Buckingham Transport Study, which um, which I did give them a copy of, um, because I didn't know whether they'd seen it. Um, and the the Buckingham Transport Study, which was uh, uh, was was rocketed away by the how to be bailed plan, and was disregarded, is now seems to be in play again, because the Buckingham Transport Study in its in it estimated that any development, this is Ozu Way, this is whatever, would have to make a contribution to the traffic alleviation in Buckingham. And it was going to be an incremental document. And part of that, which has got nothing to do tonight, it's on the introducing it, was the Western Bypass. So there is some questions in here because they've already used the Buckinghamshire transport plan in mentioning that they were going to take contributions from Ozzy Way to do this development roundabout there and also take contributions from the section 106 there. So when John says it's linking something with something, it is linking it with it. But the sec that the, if I say to you that I believe that, that my knowledge is that that application may well be determined on Thursday, the application one way or another, Mays Morton Road 3 might be on the 1st of, of September. I believe that that will go to planning on the 1st of September. So one the chairman's commenting now is actually timely in his comments because um, if that application is determined on the 1st of September, which I believe it probably will be, um, they will then go and say, we agree it or don't agree it, pending all this such and such information. And what we are pointing out is that their information is flawed. So we will be going to that meeting. I think the council here has decided it would be big at that meeting. So I think that could either be part of that discussion there that their section 106 is flawed to do with Mays Morton Road, but it did get mentioned, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chairman and Catherine, it did get mentioned on the Ozu Way application yeah, the contribution to it so my worry is that we do miss that we miss a trick it's, it's not strictly about the you know, 4231 bypass it's gone yeah. quite right yeah. we do have so yeah. 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 carol barrel he's going to go on to the agenda but i don't know why we need to put some research into it anyway so why don't we take the same well, research i suggest, suggest that i would take the council for this photograph and wait to the highways officer and say why? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we undertake that research, okay. yeah. 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 it's yeah. 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 Down the center room with two fans going. Can I ask those at the other end of the room to speak up? I'm um, sorry. My suggestion is that Catherine and I do a little bit of research in anticipation of it going on the future agenda. Find out a bit more about why it's proposed, and if it's important, we'll circulate that to you. Okay. Thank you. Everyone happy with that? Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for that. Yeah. We haven't actually agreed formally the motion to support Robin 
antagonist to a public. Wait, I thought we did. Yes, we did. My vote. We did. It's not been proposed. Yeah, but then we're still talking. I raised this okay. as an addendum right. to that. Yeah. As an I get addendum. lost in the process, don't I? Well, we have a vote, <laughs> and then we don't move on to the next one in the end. It's kind of different. It's, yeah. a, it's a neat thing. I have two of them. Right. <laughs> Nine five to review the find out if you need the planning permission service to discuss any concerns we have about it. I think Catherine is the one we should ask about it. <laughs> Put you on the spot. It's, um, it's not very well described. It's, it's really, it's allowing the ordinary man, if you like, to go to a website and mm -hmm. see what the website decides on the information that he puts in it, mm -hmm. whether he's going to have to apply for planning permission. Yeah. My concern is that it's not well enough defined. And what is the comeback if you actually tell the court? And it says, oh, you don't need planning permission for that. And then goes ahead and builds what it is. And then the neighbors say, oh, what's, what's, what's going on? You, you, you said a single story conservatory, and now it's a two story extension. And he'll say, I'm not going to do that to them because I don't know. Where's the checks and balances? Because it's a computer or a person. Because if they do that without having to see, Have any company, you know, if he decides he wants to whiz around to, to books and you know, get the necessary thing to fill it up himself. Yeah. I don't think that guy's going to be fixed if he wants to sell the house with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there's too many openings. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's making a <coughs> possibly for both councils. Yeah. They just, they, you know, there's, well, you could have gone to our planning advice because we could say, well, and you're going to have to produce proper drawings. This may not. If the computer says, no, you go ahead, yeah, we've got nothing. It doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't sit well, does it? We've just been given more power, more devolved planning powers. That suddenly mm -hmm. decide they're going to take it, not even in house, but put it on the computer with, okay. a, with a bot. You get a number of retrospective applications as it is, but at yeah. least they have to come up with properly prepared yeah. drawings. And when they do get the retrospective presentation, we do put it up. Well, what, what, so. what, what position does it put in force? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. this is a shocking thing because there's no the one thing that keeps planning in order is the fact that there's order. And actually, this is um, this is like uh, a pirateer, uh, a free people, and, 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 and what's the term for prize here, um, applications. So you can actually do something because you could suggest that you could do this, and then you do have rights to object and to defend your property. So what you could get a situation like this where if somebody just goes and builds something already over somebody else's piece of land, um, or, or or takes a fence and moves it, and then they've left the whole burden with that other person to then say, well, there wasn't an application. Where was the application? There was no application, but you said they could build it. Where's the paperwork? And what we'd end up, the only people who's going to gain out of this is solicitors, barristers, and, and people taking the building down and, build, and, and moving it or putting it up in the first place. There's nothing in this for the public. The public is protected by proper statute and proper regulations and people making decisions. This is, this is irresponsible. It, it, it's against basic common English law, I would suggest, and, and doesn't represent the best of what is um, is legal, I would expect. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine this uh, is uh, going to be a great opportunity for a whole legal firm in the country to make an absolute living out of people being, um, you know, because I could just turn up at the mayor's garden and decide I'm going to put a planning application in a garden. Put the shed up and we sleep, she'd be really pleased that I know. Um, but mm -hmm. the one that we have to see is it's just nonsense, isn't it? It's absolute nonsense. Basically, what Catherine said, it's not really precious. This is, it says it's a pilot scheme, 
No. I being asked to well, my, my little pirate. <laughs> <laughs> pirate. <laughs> Basically, um, haven't been as saying, look, I'm a vegetable and one of the three yeah. people in the country. Lots of Peter Strachan's. Yeah. Yeah. Can we suggest they try it in Marlow? And um, and I suggest they, they fly it in Chesham. And I suggest they fly it down there, not use North but as an experimental ground for difficulties. John. Sure. As it is the pilot, it should be evaluated. Mm -hmm. So I suggest that we would like to do the strapping and ask him how it will be evaluated for success and how some of our concerns about people getting a false positive answer from it um, will be prevented um, and raise some of those concerns that we've been discussing. And say basically, I mean, in principle, I think it's a good idea. Who can go on the net and answer a series of questions and get a fairly concise answer? Um, that's a good thing. We should be able to do that for a lot of people. You can do that for a lot of people. What is the place on the website of County where you can just ask simple questions? You know, can I go to the state of the United States without me? Already exists. We don't need this extra layer with dubious results. Okay, all right. And we, I still think that we should ask so how we can evaluate it. But secondly, I'd like to have a go. So if you, have you said anything there? We, we have all our other links and just have a go. Oh, and see whether we can build a link. There's a link to the properties that's all circulated. You have to do a bit of extra diving on the thing now because it doesn't lead you straight to the page. It de delivers you to the planning of the website, and then you have to sort of move around and around it. Have you, have you found? Yes. yes. Can you circulate that in? Yes, I have. We're proposing then that we, we express our concerns to put this back in the back. Yeah, and we ask how it's going to be evaluated. Thank you. Um, and that we all have a go, something to the time, the time available, and see if we build a free block. You know, we've got the facts. There is a very important question here. We need to ask, not only validating, we need to ask, when was this agreed? What level of scrutiny did it undertake within the council before it became policy? Because this looks to me that if it went through um, growth and infrastructure committee, they must have been asleep. Um, because anyone would have raised questions of probity and about it. And we need to ask the minutes when it was agreed is it a cabinet member's decision notice? And this is going in which case, when was it published? But I did read the cabinet member's decision notice, I am capable of making mistakes, but I probably wouldn't have gone to call this in on the very grounds that where it is because it looks to me that we're having decisions by cabinet members about process and what we do without it going through a due process, governance and scrutiny in the council. I don't recall, I don't recall anyone who sits on growth and infrastructure raising it to me. Um, and I don't recall this, I could have missed it. I could have gone out to the toilet or I could have been um, on the phone or I could have done something during a cabinet meeting. But I do go to cabinet meetings and I don't recall this going to happen. But I think we do need, the evidence base of the decision base, of where it was proposed, where it was agreed, and what governance and scrutiny were undertaken over the decision. And if there was no governance and scrutiny over the decision, it's really bad decision making. You've got a situation where an individual in a council can change policy. And that is a dangerous thing. The only thing that holds council in any local authority is rigour and scrutiny. I've also asked that they're going to reduce their current 65 planning staff because of this. Well, this might be what it's going to need them to tidy up the rooms. <laughs> anyway, we have had a proposal in a second that the, um, with the addition. Mm. Are you happy? You happy with the yeah, addition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it's important they're added. Yeah, yeah. All those in favour? That's, you know, that's, Martin seems to retire. <laughs> well, it is. Um, yeah. Oh, not, it's not as young. So, um, Catherine has presented a proposal to change all the list. No change from the previous one. Noted. 
Thank you. Yeah. Updates from representatives on outside bodies. Anthony, we've heard from you already. Yeah. Anyone else? No, thank you. Buckinghamshire okay, Council Committee meetings, North Bank and Strategic, and in July and August, both cancelled um, because of the number of decisions being taken by Chairman and the Mops. Enforcement, mm -hmm. any new breaches in relevance to report? No. Application to fell trees to receive the updated list. No. Mm -hmm. That is to report any damage, superfluous, redundant signage in the town, access issues, or any other urgent matter. John. The elephant crossing, or rather, sorry, the Pegasus crossing up by Whitehead, the road is severely damaged. It was very warm a few weeks ago, particularly when the truck had been by. Very damaged, that could cause an accident. The actual road surface. The road surface, yes, it's pretty, really quite significant. Mm -hmm. Has it been reported on my street? So I think it wraps my question. That wipe now. Thank you. That, that, it's that, on the uh, western side. Okay. The, the bit of the road, uh, as you know, everyone knows what's happened is the bit of the road closed from Verney to Morton Road was closed today. Mm -hmm. Did anybody tell the bus people because they were coming past? Tesco Express. Oh. What? What? <laughs> yeah. 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 For non emergency affairs, it's to repair the corner of the jail. It's going to be closed every day from six until um, five. Until Friday. And the first notice we got said was 2 30 this afternoon, definitely within two or three minutes of notified everybody. I wanted to raise it tonight. Uh, I've already emailed the response. This is totally unacceptable. It's a game. Yeah. And the diversions, I took you wrong. I'm sorry, the diversions, the prison, took you wrong. They come all the way down to uh, Stratford Road, then they put around about to turn back and go back. Again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? On that little roundabout. But the jail round would turn around and go back. Why not tell people? Have... Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's just totally unacceptable. And again, it's you know, maybe someone was on hold there and they couldn't send it out for the day. So yes. the reason for the material is the fact that it's been a huge inconvenience today. The whole bypass is surrounded with these signs avoiding the town town centre. <laughs> They yeah, could be asking what the grant is on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 There are these things do have to be advertised, and and they do have to. It's a, if it's a Buckinghamshire council, a utility where they can just turn up and do what they want. It's a legal they, thing that they, yeah, have to they We need to go and ask advertise. them. When did they advertise it? Um, when did they give notice? Highways and technical. But they still have to give them license to do it. On the public highway, they can't just mm. the old jail cannot just it's not a utility, it's, it's not, not a utility. utility. No, it's not gas, no, no. So, so it's not an emergency. Yeah, we, we need to go to highways and, and yeah, well, Claire, Claire's already raised it. Yeah, I know. So I'm just just reporting also, we need to ask I have, I saw it today and I was mildly confused. I thought, oh, they're digging the road up for a left for the telephone again, <laughs> or you know, or for the internet. Is that what you think you said you did now, don't mm. you? But this, yeah, we want the old jail fixed. There's some courtesies around this, and we need to ask the three Buckingham East councillors whether they were consulted. I don't remember being consulted. Well, can we wait for first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah. Has, she has emailed. Would they be shocked and horrid if they found this gone on without their notice, surely? Should we please release the family and ask these questions? 
Well, that, that's where well, we shall we say we're all the case. Some of them must be on the hill tomorrow in the market. I think that I'm back. Yeah. Well, we put out a press release tonight, maybe tomorrow morning early, <laughs> saying the market's still on, and <laughs> we are investigating as to why there was pressure well, little. That could have been on Facebook. Yeah, on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, I think we should. I don't think we go to, you know, put it out there. Somebody will can tag in Buckinghamshire County to do that. And anyway, then, um, Claire's on top of it. That's the method. We'll see what happens in the morning. We'll talk about the next part. Yeah, I'm sure we'll If the trade goes down, we'll ask for something. Yeah, compensation. Right. So, is there anything else? Access, etc. No, chairman's items next. The information I have on date of next meeting, Monday the 19th September, following the Did that? Oh, right, we did. We did. <laughs> um, we that. Oh, we did. Yes. It's close. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Captain, just reminded me. Um, I think I've that to bring it with me, but exactly what I thought. Uh, there is a Milton Keynes consultation on new parking um, orders and restrictions and guidelines for the development for Milton Keynes, and there is going to be um, an online meeting about it. There's a tutorial available online for anybody interested, yeah. and right. then a question and answer session afterwards. I would suggest yeah. that Sheena and Catherine. Anyone else? Yeah, we circulate it. I've got it. You can't answer the nature of that. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. It's nice that they want the involvement in Milton Keynes. You don't get that one. Look, it's a team that we in particular can adopt with neighborhood plans. It's going to be the new parking regulations. There's 75 pages of it, and it goes into immense detail with. How many parking spaces per flat per shop? Per, you know, all sorts oh, right. of things. Yeah. Size, exactly. Sizes of parking bays. You know, how much extra you need if it's in line or parallel. It is. It looks quite interesting, and there is going to be a question and answer session afterwards. Oh. Which it might be useful. Okay. Yeah. Because eventually we'll get round to having a parking insurer. Yeah. There are more questions to ask, won't we? We have been properly by us in the council. Yeah. So let's take the chance. Yeah. 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 Anyway, thank you, Catherine. Uh, next meeting, Monday night. The meeting ends at 9.30. Is that a six? 9.30. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine.